good to be with you again as we observe in the Catholic community the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. There's an image, a strong image, that looms in both the Old and the New Testament. It's the image of a woman, a widow in particular, and it's very important that that description of her uh, is kept in mind. Because in the Old and the New Testament, widows were considered a very special, you might say, a level of need and poverty. Not that all widows were poor, but by and far. If you were widowed uh, in those days, in Jesus' day, or certainly before that, and, and to, in many centuries after Jesus' day, a widow was in almost destitute situation. It was not easy for her. <coughs> Excuse me. She had lost <clears throat> she had lost uh, her guarantee of income. And that was a different world. There were no jobs a woman could take after her husband died. Uh, there was no uh, extra money. There was no Social Security. There were no insurance programs. There were no pension programs she could call upon uh, to sustain her. Uh, in a sense, it was a, a very, very graphic way of describing someone with very little. And so in the Old Testament, the great Elijah the prophet comes into an area or a territory that is not generally filled with Jewish people. And so uh, it's, it's a, it, you might say it's, it's almost hostile. And yet uh, he comes up to this woman and says, uh, hey, bring me something to eat and to drink. And uh, she responds as honestly as a, as a widow would say, now hold on, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I can get you a cup of water, but, you know, I have only a handful of, of flour left and a small jar of oil, and there's only my son and me uh, to eat, uh, to take, uh, use that, so what can I give you? And, and then he, he sort of gives a prophecy. He says to her, just so beautifully, he says, As the Lord your God lives, uh, I, I have nothing baked. There's only a handful of of flour in my jar and a little oil in my oil, she says. And then he says, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then prepare something for your son. For the Lord God of Israel says, the jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain upon the earth. You have to remember they were living under the condition of a drought. And probably the widow did have a small piece of maybe land, maybe a garden. Uh, she would uh, tend and from it extract uh, foods, vegetables that she and her son could eat. But even that was gone. She had really nothing. And so the prophet says that God's going to keep you uh, with filled with your, your flour jar and your oil jar uh, until the rains come again and you can start taking produce from the earth. And she trusts the prophet. And for a year it goes on until the rains come again. The prophet is taken care of by her. Uh, this woman who has so little uh, becomes the sustainer of the great prophet Elijah. Now Jesus' uh, description of the widow is a little different. It takes place in the temple, in the temple treasury. Got to keep in mind another element here. Uh, donations when they were made to the temple were made uh, in public. You might say, well, why would they do that? Well, very reason, for the very reason of this. There was no other communication. And it was a way of displaying uh, to the public who was giving what. So, you know, if the rich people in the, in the town of Jerusalem were expected to provide for the maintenance of the temple. It was, it was a central uh, place of worship and prayer for the whole Jewish community, and certainly those that had money certainly should contribute to uh, the upkeep of the temple and the high priests and the priests that were offering the sacrifices according to the law of Moses. So this woman, so this woman comes in probably amidst uh, some big givers. You know, they're dropping, uh, and remember it's all coins. They had, sort of, they had sort of like funnels that went into uh, like an underground, uh, not underground, but beneath a, a floor uh, of, of containers, and, the, and the, the coins would drop in there. 
and everybody could and they sat around and watched it. It was like it was like a little bit of a show, you know. They say, "Who's coming today to give? What kind of money are they going to give?" And the, and the word spread. Oh, you know, uh, Mr. Herodias came and he donated, you know, uh, you know, five hundred shekels. And somebody else came and they they donated a little bit more or less. And then comes along this widow, and uh, Jesus is 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 uh, watches her drop her little coin in there, and. Uh, he makes a comment because he wants to draw uh, to the people a, a lesson, not only for them, but for us in particular. So he says uh, very, very simply, uh, he says, uh, Amen, I say to you, this poor woman put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has contributed all she had her whole livelihood. Interesting. You know, we all like to think we're generous. And that's not bad. Generosity is a, is a wonderful um, gift and grace. And sharing what we have, we know, is very important. But we have to remember how often we share is coming, really, from surplus, from our surplus. Rarely, rarely. Does it ever deny us anything that we give something to someone else? Isn't that true? Rarely, rarely uh, does it ever come to that point that uh, like the widow at the treasury in the temple, um, she gives from her poverty, from all she had, her whole livelihood, not from surplus wealth. So I think the lesson for us and for the Christian community of the world is um, are we operating always from surplus wealth? When does it come that we sometimes have to give even more than we could imagine? God bless you.